Agora TV. The world is thinking. Okay, so let me start off. Um, and Pete mentioned this very briefly, but I think it's important to just really contemplate it because it is astonishing, and that is why you are the special person you are. Um, no one has had a brain like yours for the 100,000 years human beings have stalked the planet, and they won't ever again. And even if you're a clone, that's to say an identical twin, no one still will have, not even your twin, a brain like yours. Now, why is this? It's because of an ability that we as a species have par excellence compared to others, um, I like to compare it for some reason. I've got it in for the goldfish, and so I've said many times that uh, why are we different from goldfish? And, of course, goldfish, um, if one died, you could get another one and your kids wouldn't know any different when they came home, whereas you couldn't do that with cats, cats or dogs, and you certainly couldn't do it even if they might want you to with their brothers or sisters. <laughs> and the reason is because um, what we do par excellence is we don't run fast or see well particularly, or we're not strong compared to other species, but what we do brilliantly is we learn. We adapt, and I think my first point, and my starting point, is that we are a species where we will adapt to whatever environment in which we are placed, and we will only be good at what we rehearse. It follows, therefore, that whatever activity we do, we will be good at, and if we don't do those things, it will be very hard for us to be proficient at them. Um, so starting off with the screen technology, we have to start thinking, if you're spending a lot of time engaged in the cyber world, what are you not doing? And is that good or bad? Well, let me just give you an example of the plasticity and one that I, I truly like involving, I think Pete obviously has read the same, um, same papers as me, or he may have read that I've cited this before, which is a wonderful experiment of three groups of adult volunteers, none of whom could play the piano. Um, if ever you get to volunteer for such an experiment, a word of advice, don't be the control group, because they just stared at a piano for five days. Um, <laughs> then the next group uh, had to learn five-finger piano exercises, and there's astonishing change even over five days in the brain scans, the brain territory. Uh, but the most remarkable of all were the third group, who just stared at the piano, but imagined they were playing it, and their scans were the same as the people that physically played it. So even a thought can bend your synapses, your connections can shape and change what you are doing. So just imagine what's happened to your brain, even as we're sitting here now. Unless you're, of course, asleep, but hopefully you're not. So, so the whole point is that the brain is exquisitely adaptable to the environment. And therefore, and this is my starting point, and all I've ever done, despite the disparaging and demonizing comments that, of course, people like to, to do, um, all I've ever done is say, well, let's please look at this, because we cannot assume that the way the brain will change, and it is indeed a given that the brain will change, that it is all for the good.